how to be a savvy dinner party host. Things may look a little different this year when it comes to hosting, but believe me, if you have hosted or entertained in the past, you'll be back at it in no time, and today's video will be a great one to reference back to. Just like there are common courtesies and proper manners with being a guest, the same rule applies for being a host. The goal should be to make your guest feel welcomed and comfortable. A few days ago, I published a video sharing 20 tips to have proper etiquette, table manners, and common courtesies for being a guest how to be a gracious guest. That video will be in the description box below this video. I'll also put a card up here in the corner. If you click on that, you can watch that video right after you watch today's video. You will also find several other videos that have to do with being a host, being a guest, and how to throw a stellar party. I have hosted many parties on a large scale all the way down to a small intimate dinner. I am here today to share my knowledge with you. If you are looking to throw something more grand, like I said, maybe not right now, but in the future, I have a video that will help you to check off all the boxes of how to throw a great party and make it a memorable experience for your guest. I also have a free download that you can print out with all of those tips that will be linked in the description box below. Let's dive into the tips on how to be a savvy dinner party host. Think about who you are going to invite. Make sure that the couples or the individuals are a good fit for one another. How is the conversation going to be? From there, you want to reach out to the people that you would like to attend. It's very important to communicate specific details about your dinner party. Give your guest plenty of time to see if the date that you give them will work for them. Do not expect the person that you reach out to to immediately tell you if they are going to be there or not. I actually prefer to reach out either in an invitation that is handwritten or in an email or a text message. This allows the person to reference back to all of the details. If you do it over the phone, you don't necessarily know if they are taking notes and they could miss pertinent information. This is also an opportunity for you to ask if they have any medical food sensitivities or allergies, also if they have any preference for a beverage. If you will be serving alcohol, sometimes it's nice to know what your guests like to drink. Some men, for example, only like domestic beer while others drink craft beer. Some don't like mixed drinks at all. Some women don't like wine. So I always ask my guests when I am hosting what drinks they prefer. Be prepared to answer the question of how should I dress? So it's really important for you to have an idea of what you are going to be wearing the night that you host dinner. This is also when you want to make it clear that no children are invited unless, of course, you are including them. Generally, how I handle this to come off politely is I may say something to the effect of, this is a great night to get away from the children and just enjoy adult conversation with no distractions. Generally, that will get the point across, but be prepared for a guest to maybe ask you again later on. And if you've already determined no children are invited, stick to your guns. Just say, I'm sorry, we're only hosting for adults. Especially if you are going to be drinking adult beverage. It's really not a place for a bunch of young children. If you want to ensure that your guest will leave by a certain time, then I would let them know when you invite them we're hosting dinner from six to 10, whatever it may be. Determine what it is. Also be very clear about when dinner actually is going to take place. Typically people don't arrive to an invitation till about five to 10 minutes after the arrival time. So if a party starts at six, you want people to be there right at six, not any earlier, but you don't want them to walk in and now it's time to eat. I always give about an hour. If I'm hosting a really large gathering and we're doing buffet style because the party is so grand, 
I typically have a two hour window that I call cocktail hour. So we don't even eat for two hours. That allows plenty of time for guests to arrive prior to us sitting down to eat. Be prepared that the person you reach out to could offer to contribute something to the meal. You'll want to think about this ahead of time. If you know the person is really not someone who does a lot of cooking or baking, then you may want to request that they bring a bottle of wine or something else, maybe something to drink. Because if you have them bring a dessert, you may wind up having something store-bought from the grocery store. And that's not going to look good on your end if that's what you're serving for a dessert. If you know someone makes killer appetizers and they are a cook and everyone loves the preparations they make, then you may think about having them bring some type of hors d'oeuvre or a dessert. If I'm hosting a small party, I typically handle everything, unless it's with my kids, but I'm not really talking about having my kids over because it's a much different atmosphere and dynamic with my kids. A lot of the rules I would talk about today or tips, we break when we are just with our children. We can be a little bit more relaxed. If I were inviting four couples over, three or four couples over, I'm generally going to take care of everything as far as food is related. That way they can have a night off. But I may request someone to bring a bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne. A few things to consider prior to arrival. You should already have the table set up. I typically do this the night before and I'll be honest with you, I get all of the dishware, glassware, silverware, everything out probably a week or two ahead of time just to make sure I have the proper number to set the table properly. Then I wash it the day before and I generally will do the place settings the day before. Sometimes I won't set out the glassware yet just because I feel like that could collect dust a little bit more. But yes, you'll want to set your table up the day before. I talk about this in my party planning checklist. Be sure to print that out for lots of great tips. You already have all of your dishes on the table. Make sure everything is in the proper spot because that is what your guests are going to know. It's important that silverware is placed in the correct position, the bread plate is in the correct position, and the glassware is in the correct position. If you need help with that, watch my dining etiquette video. If it's a holiday dinner party, it's nice to add a little touch to the napkin, maybe some greenery with some berries or maybe a small box of chocolate. It also adds to the tablescape. Make sure pets are nowhere to be seen or smelled. This is very important. Even if your guests have pets, it's very different in other people's home. It shows a sign of respect if you have your pets taken care of. If you have a relative who lives close by, it may be nice even to take your pets to their home if they're willing. Have a designated place for your guest coats to go and handbags. I talk about this in my party planning video. You'll want to check that out. You know that having your phone out is a faux pas when you're entertaining or at dinner. When you are the host to a party, however, I believe you need to have your phone handy and you need to be checking it often leading up to the guest arriving. There's nothing worse with being distracted by all of the preparations and someone is trying to reach out to you because they can't find your home. You want to keep your phone handy. Even if guests are arriving, you still periodically want to check your phone as long as it's prior to dinner. Once all the guests have arrived and you know that no one is going to be reaching out to you because they have a last minute question or they can't find your home or they want to know if you have ice or if they need to bring a bag, whatever it may be, then you're going to want to put your phone someplace out of sight. Make sure everyone knows where the restroom is. It's also important to make sure the restroom is well stocked. Have a fresh roll of toilet paper on and make sure you have extra rolls. Also, sometimes ladies have little emergencies happen. It's important to have somewhere in your restroom a few items that they may need in a pinch. Your guests have arrived. What happens prior to dinner? Well, again, most often we have a little bit of time for cocktails. As mentioned, guests typically arrive right on time or within five to 10 minutes after. It's very important 
that you are prepared with everything that needs to be done so that you can be on hand when that doorbell goes off because that can take up a lot of time within like a 20 minute span when everyone's arriving. So you'll want to make sure you're ready to go so that you're not frazzled and that you come off stressed when your guests arrive. You want to be in a peaceful state. If you're putting off stress because you're overwhelmed because they're arriving, they're going to feel that. And again, we want them to feel welcome and comfortable. Expect to receive hostess gifts. This does not mean from everyone. So it's very important that if a guest arrives with a gift for you, that you have an inconspicuous place to put it. The reason for this is if another guest arrives and they did not bring a gift, it will make them feel uncomfortable and awkward if they see that other people brought a gift. Could you imagine being the only couple that didn't bring something? Most often, you're going to be thinking about that all night, and that's really going to take away from you just relaxing and enjoying yourself. A gracious guest always knows that the host is going to take their gift put it to the side where it is out of sight and open it generally the next day. If it's just a couple friends and everyone knew that they were going to bring a gift and they all brought one, it can be different. You have to feel it out, but typically there's going to be someone who didn't bring something. So a good rule of thumb is just to put the gift off someplace to the side. If a guest had asked you if they could bring something to contribute to the dinner and you took them up on the offer, generally that person won't bring a hostess gift. Their gift would be whatever they prepared to contribute or the bottle of wine or spirits that they brought. If you will be mingling, make sure you have plenty of drinks to offer your guest and make sure that you are on top of that. Also, only one pre-dinner cocktail for the host. I also recommended that for the guest as well. If you watch the video on how to be a gracious guest, 20 tips, you're going to hear a lot of repeat tips in that video as you do this because it's the same thing. It's proper etiquette, good table manners, in common courtesies. Also remind your spouse or significant other the same thing, one pre-dinner drink. Now again, if you're hosting a larger party on a bigger scale and it is two hours prior to dinner, my rule of thumb is no more than one cocktail per hour. So if I were to start a party at five o'clock and dinner wasn't going to be until seven, I may have one drink between five and six, and I may have one between six and seven, but that's it, especially if you're hosting. Don't do any pre-gaming, <laughs> which I really never knew what pre-gaming was until my, my girls, maybe that was later in life, but don't pre-game. That, that is never going to turn out positive. Be prepared that your guest will wait for you to be seated. So no one will go sit at the table that is set up for dinner. If you feel that in the mingling, you're getting a, you're getting a cue yourself that some people would like to go sit down, that would be up to you to communicate that. Have a seat if anyone would like to. Also, if you would like your guests to sit in a particular place, it's important to have place cards set out or let people know. If I am going to have assigned seats, I don't want to mess with it, so I'll put place cards out. I'm also someone that typically puts couples together. I know some people don't. They mix them up because they feel like it gets the conversation more intermixed. I just prefer to put couples together, but that's going to be up to you. Another rule of thumb is I always try to place my guests in the seats where they will have the best view. For example, the great room, which you see behind me. That's a much more appealing view than looking at my kitchen where I have been cooking all day and I have pots and pans and dishes and different things to make it more cluttered and messy. Although I do clean up as I go and typically I do have the kitchen looking pretty good by party time, when you're hosting a dinner, it can be difficult. It's much different if you have a buffet somewhere, but think about what they're going to be looking at while they're eating their meal. Let's move into the actual dinner itself. If you plan to give a toast, you have a couple of options. You could give your toast 
prior to going to the table, always remember we never cling our glass with another guest. You just raise your glass. And generally, you're going to be the one that's going to give the toast. I always think about the guest that I am hosting the party for. Is there anything of significance that I may want to mention? So that's something to think about. Also with your conversation, you want to have a few different icebreakers to get the conversation rolling if you need to, especially if couples don't know one another. I don't do a lot of that. Generally, I like to put my gatherings with people that know one another and then I don't have to work so hard. I also know who is a good fit for one another when it comes to individuals or couples. So this could even apply if you were having a bunch of ladies over. Who's going to be a good fit for one another? Sometimes we can orchestrate those things and it can be to our favor. But you can either do the toast prior to going to the table or at the table. It's going to be your preference. It goes without saying, as soon as you are seated, unfold your napkin and put it in the proper position. I talk about this in the video for the guest as well. Understand that your guests are waiting for a cue from you as to when to start eating. So as soon as you sit down and put your napkin in its proper position, you'll want to pick up your utensils at that time because that will cue everyone else to pick theirs up as well. You don't want to sit down and strike up a whole new conversation or topic because that's going to delay the eating process because they're waiting on you. It should also go without saying to use proper dining etiquette, table manners, and common courtesies. Be in conversation with everyone at the table. There should be a nice flow, a nice bouncing back. I always say you're bouncing the ball, tossing the ball, picture that game of tossing the ball to different people. It's really important to keep that flow going and the host can have a lot to do with that. Don't be in conversation with the person next to you only. It's important to keep the communication going with everyone. Just like I mentioned in the video for the guests, you want to avoid controversial topics or anything that could be sensitive to someone. You do not speak ill of anyone. You do not talk negatively about anything, even if there's something negative in your world going on. If someone were to ask you or if someone else brings up something that is more catabolic or negative in nature or controversial, reroute the conversation. I talk all the time about how strategic you can be by asking a question about them that's positive. How's your son that's in law school? How was your trip to wherever, whoever, who's taking trips? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, something positive to reroute the conversation. Also, don't talk about health to the good or the bad and don't talk about diet <laughs> and exercise. Don't talk about weight loss. This is not the time. If you ladies want to talk about the diet plan you're following later on after dinner, I'd steer clear. I don't think it's the place to do it or the time, but a lot of women, that's a big topic for them because it's also a sensitivity. Most, most women are on some type of diet. Really, really gauge if it's appropriate because if you have someone who, let's say, is clearly overweight and, and everyone else may be a little bit more fit, how do you think she may feel? I don't know. I don't want to assume. And that's what we have to be careful of. Don't assume that everyone is going to be on point with that conversation. And if you are a savvy host, you're going to be good at rerouting those conversations. It does take practice and it is a skill. The more you entertain and host, the better you get at all of these things. Let's move into after dinner and dessert, which dessert can be part of the dinner. You're gonna have to decide, and you may want to do this ahead of time, if you're going to offer post-dinner cocktails. You could serve a coffee or espresso concoction made with some type of spirit with the dessert or even after having dessert. You'll have to decide, but be prepared because if you are going to want people to wrap it up relatively early, I don't mean right after dinner. You never want your guests to feel like, well, thanks for coming everyone. See ya, you don't want to do that. Just like we warm up to dinner by having the cocktail hour, we also want to phase out of dinner and phase out of the night 
slowly with ease, comfort, and you want everyone to feel, again, still welcomed. But they're watching for you to give cues. So think ahead of time what your strategy is going to be. If you plan on having everyone stick around for two, three more hours, by all means, go ahead. But recognize if you're going to want your guests to leave in let's say an hour or an hour and a half, they're going to be looking for cues from you. So if you keep pouring the drinks, it would make sense if they stick around. Also be prepared that guests may offer to help clean up, which is so nice. And I do mention in the guest video that you should. Also decide how you're going to handle this prior. It's good to come back with your response right away instead of having to think about everything. That's why it's so important for you to print out the party tips list because so many of these things that I'm talking about are covered on that printable. Have a game plan and stick to it. I generally like to spend my time having everyone visit. I don't wanna put work on other people, but when it comes to the food, I do want to get the food taken off the table. If there's any leftovers, we'll put them in containers and put them in the refrigerator. So I often will take up the offer of having some help because we can knock it out relatively fast. But as far as all of the dirty dishes, I let that go. I don't want any of my guests spending time with that. Once the food is put away, we're back to just enjoying one another's company and having some great conversation and plenty of laughs. I will deal with the dishes later that night if it's not too late or the next day. Let's go into wrapping things up. This is the exit. If you don't have an end time for your party, again, your guests are going to be watching you for cues and I pretty much already covered what to avoid if you're going to want people to kind of navigating to the door. Keep the goodbyes brief. Thank your guests for coming and if anyone brought a gift or brought a dish to pass or some type of contribution, don't forget to thank them for that. If they brought a hostess gift, it's nice to say, I cannot wait to open the gift that you brought to me tomorrow morning or whatever while I'm, while I'm having my coffee. It's nice to say something like that because again, if everyone didn't bring, it's if it's a small party, two couples and they brought, both brought a gift, that's a different story. If you want to open those maybe after dinner, that's a great time. But when we get to more numbers, again, there's always a good chance someone's not going to bring one, but you still want to thank the person discreetly so no one else that potentially didn't bring a gift hears you. Keep it brief, keep it short. Also, people aren't generally all walking to the door at once, so you want to keep your time brief with one, knowing you still have other people that are going to be wanting your attention as well. It's really important that every single person gets walked to the door, you give them their coach, you say your goodbyes, and then go to the next person. Well, there you have it. How to be a savvy dinner party host. Don't forget to check out the video on how to be a gracious guest, as well as all of the other videos that I have in the drop down box below. Also print out the download that is my free gift to you. I also have a party planning checklist as well that you'll want to check out on the website. There will be links to both of those in the drop down box. Thanks for joining me. I will see you right back here next week on YouTube.